This is TK Academy, which is Team Knowledge for Architects and Designers. This is one of our sessions in the Technology Forum, which is a discussion of the technology and tools and how we use them within the industry. And the subject matter for today is AutoCAD. To begin, I wanted to draw attention to the United States National CAD Standard, and I'm on the web page here. The U.S. National CAD Standard was uh, developed uh, by the contribution of some of the major organizations within the industry. You can see the list down here uh, in the bottom left, uh, contributors, the American Institute of Architects, AIA, uh, CSI, Construction uh, Specifications Institute, and then the National Institute of Building Sciences. Uh, there were many others, but these were some of the major contributors to develop the standard. And on the top here, the tabs, if I click Adapters, uh, Adopters of the United States uh, National CAD standard and scroll down to the bottom and here right here you can see TK architecture uh, we are one of the adapters of this standard so all the uh, the templates and standards uh, that you see are all were all developed and built in accordance to the, the US National CAD standard first we're going to take a look at how we have CAD information organized we work within a SharePoint environment and all of our templates are in different folders we have a dedicated folder for just AutoCAD. Within that, we have three different folders for blocks, details, and templates. For blocks, blocks would be uh, similar to symbols, isn't our name for them. We have these organized by uh, master format by divisions. So you can see here the division number and the division title. So we can take a look at metals. If we open up that, they're all individual uh, CAD files for different uh, shapes of steel. So we have decking, we have our C shapes, uh, K joist, uh, angles, uh, tube steel, and white flanges. Take a look at another category, uh, furnishings. We have, these are all of our um, uh, blocks for uh, casework elevations. And for landscaping, down to exterior improvements, these are all of our plant symbols that we have. So altogether we have uh, over 600 blocks in, within our library. We'll cover that more in detail later. <clears throat> the next folder is for details. and This is organized differently. This is organized by uniformat. So we have the different levels here and names. The uh, reason why this is organized different is because most details uh, deal with assemblies, not individual components or materials. So let's look at uh, uh, B for building shell. If we open that up, we have the different folders for superstructure, uh, interior enclosures, and roofing. And again, when we open that up, we see all the different standard details that are uh, included in that folder for a building shell, a building exterior. Same thing for roofing. There's our standard details that we have for uh, uh, roofing. Going back to details, uh, underneath uh, E equipment and furnishings, uh, we have all of our casework details and signage that are listed in that folder. And one more for site work. If you open up that, underneath site improvements, here are all of our landscape and site uh, standard details that we have. So in this folder, we have um, uh, under details, we have 350 standard details. One that I, I probably should mention too is underneath interiors uh, with interior construction. This is the only one where we have a, a subfolder uh, underneath one of the main categories for interior partitions. So uh, all your uh, interior partition walls, um, this is, can be numerous. We have 150 standard uh, interior wall partitions listed in, in here. Going back to our AutoCAD folder, then the last one uh, we have is a folder for templates. And we, uh, we use two main size uh, of, uh, drawing sheets. We use the ANSI D, which is 22 by 34, and the ARC F, which is 30 by 42. Uh, most government projects will use the uh, ANSI D size. Uh, Department of Veteran Affairs uses a larger sheet, it makes sense with the hospital work that they have, the larger scale projects, uh, the 30 by 42. And we have a folder in here for our title blocks or border sheets, and then uh, you see these four different files here uh, for templates. So we're actually going to go at the bottom here 
and these are um, what the National CAD standard refers to as models. Uh, it is your uh, also called your base plan. And so we have uh, FP stands for floor plan and the SP for site plan. So we have two different model templates for creating your base plans or base sheets. Let's go ahead and just launch into one of them. We're going to start with the, uh, the uh, model for floor plans and getting into AutoCAD. So when you open this template, um, again, you, it opens up in, in uh, model space and you really don't see anything here. It's, it's kind of a blank slate, but there's actually a lot of information in it. First thing I want to mention is that uh, you have your uh, coordinate, uh, your point of origin down here, the X and Y. Uh, it, this is your zero, zero uh, base coordinate. And that defines the different quadrants. Now, as a drafting convention, we always want to um, we always want to draw within this quadrant so that the point of origin uh, is at the bottom left. And that is just a, a drafting convention that we follow. So we want to try to get all of our drawing to fit within that quadrant and not spill over the, that X and Y axis when possible. So uh, let's go jump up here to layers. Um, again, there's a lot of information in here. If you do this drop down menu, you can see all these different layers that have pre, been predefined uh, within this template. And this follows the national CAD standards. So layers that are, the A stands for architectural, uh, we have uh, E for electrical, F fire protection, G is general, I uh, interiors, uh, M for mechanical, P plumbing, and S structural, and finally at the end we have T for telecommunications. So we have all these different disciplines in here, all the building disciplines uh, have the layers in there. Now, the question I get asked a lot is, well, how do I know which layer to use? And for that answer that, I would say go up to the layers property and we open that. And now you have a lot more information in here. So you still see all these layered names that we had from the drop down. But then you have this other information, which you're familiar with CAD, this, you should be familiar with this color, the line type, line weight, and then finally at the end here, description. So the description tells you basically what this line, um, what this layer is used for. And so uh, when we're doing floor plans, uh, layers are really uh, define the object, what type of object it is. And so we can see all the descriptions that we have uh, listed in here. So these are all predefined. And as long as you work within this list of layers, you're gonna pretty much comply with that of the National CAD standard with one exception, and that is with the, uh, the colors. So if I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna click on one here and bring up uh, what the, the color uh, palette looks like. So when AutoCAD was uh, first starting, uh, the it was limited by the technology of the time, and it really only had these colors. It's about eight or nine colors that are listed here. And that's all you had to work with, which, uh, aligned well with the type of uh, line weights. Um, usually you had about uh, five to seven to nine different type of line types that, uh, line weights that were used um, when you were putting together a project. And so AutoCAD had um, associated the colors with the line weight. So if you pick blue, that might be a certain line weight. If you pick green, that would be another uh, line type. National CAD standard has kept this convention but the technology has advanced, the software has advanced, and so you know the next step, I think this was 256 colors, uh, index colors was the next level, and now you can go to true color, which is almost um, uh, indefinite, the number of colors that you can, can have. But we still only need about five or seven different uh, uh, line types or line weights. And so this uh, was no longer practical, so there was a disassociation between line weights and color. I'm going to just move this over to the side so you go back to the layer menu. You can see now we have colors and line weights. Both of these can be put in manually. There's no longer association. So this certain color does not determine the type of line weight you're going to have. You can assign any color you want to it and also assign any line weight that you want to it. But just to self-keep organized and, and uh, uh, 
way of, of um, keeping the model clean and, and uh, neat is that we've kept to some of that convention. If you notice here on these numbers, I'm going to point down here to uh, these down here, you'll see index numbers. So when I bring this up, you see the different index numbers. The way this chart is organized is that you have the even numbers on the top and odd numbers on the bottom. And then the first digits, the tens, increase as it goes from left to right. And so what we did is uh, we associated, uh, loosely associated, the um, all the, the uh, index colors that ended here with a zero would be uh, a certain line weight and the, the lightest line weight. Uh, and then the line that has all the index numbers that end with a one was the next line weight up and two, uh, a heavier line weight and three and so on. So we've kept that as a, uh, a convention just for discipline and, or, and organization purposes. The grayscale down here is something that we use for uh, existing line weights. So these are all um, set up in the uh, uh, plot styles that these are will uh, come out as half tones or, or gray colors. So we use these when we are dealing with existing. We do not use these the original standard colors much with a few exceptions. We do use uh, layer eight uh, for existing um, green color. Uh, three for um, demolition work, and uh, cyan index color four for future work, and we'll get more into that later. Okay, so back to the layer palette. Again, line weight is something else that we can, we can do manually. So if we click on this, we're brought up all the different line, uh, line weights that we have. And so we use, uh, use only a a few of these, um, even though there, there's several that are available, the uh, um, lightest one that we use is the 0.18 millimeter, and this is used a lot for hatching and pushing. Uh, 0.25 millimeter um, is more for object outlines, um, a thin line. Uh, 0.35 is our medium weight. 0.50 uh, millimeter is more for the the section cuts and 0 0.70 millimeters for, for, for heavy section cuts. And we'll talk more about that later as well. And then finally we have line types. You see most of these are continuous and um, that is the default. Everything goes into that unless you prescribe something else. So we do have uh, programmed in here uh, line types, all different line types for uh, different situations. So we have uh, uh, fire barriers, we have a uh, coax cable, uh, condensator wa water line, uh, natural gas overhead. All these are prescribed again in here and already assigned. So again, as long as you work within this palette of layers, uh, you're gonna comply with the, the national CAD standard with the exception of we introduced more colors because it was not practical to limit ourselves to the eight or so colors um, the national CAD standard had we needed to go expand past that and be able to to help improve the uh, the visual clarity when we're developing our site our uh, model plans okay let me back out of this one for just a minute and go back to our menu that was the floor plans again we have a different one here for site plans and really this is going to look very much the same operate the same way the main difference is if I do this drop down menu here for layers, you can see that we have different layers in here. C for civil, and um, there's quite a few civil layers. G, we get into our general, which is consistent across the board, and then L for, for landscaping. So we have these different layers that are um, part of this um, uh, template. But again, when you open up the palette, you can see the same thing. We've already got the colors, the line types, line weights, uh, all prescribed in here and then a description to help uh, determine what layer is used for what type of items on the uh, site plan. Okay, we're going to go ahead and close out of that one. Those are our two model templates. Now the other ones, the files that you see here from our, our uh, base uh, menu, um, they're models, but then you see this ANSI D and ARC F. So this aligns with certain um, sheet size. So if we take a look at this uh, ANSI D template, 
This one's not a blank screen. We actually have some information here that uh, uh, populates. And this is just a, a grid system uh, to uh, determine the, um, the boundaries or borders of the paper size you're going to be working with. And along with that is a, um, a scale that is associated with that and the appropriate dim scale that goes along with it as well. So eighth inch is, is what we commonly use for drawings. Uh, we draw in model space at one to one, uh, but then when we bring it into the paper space, uh, it will scale uh, at, a, at an eighth inch. And so as long as we work within these boundaries of this grid, uh, we know that that uh, drawing uh, will fit into the um, uh, viewport space at an eighth inch scale and be on our sheet. And then the other part is the, the, the dim scale that is associated with that. And what that does is uh, we do our annotations on our uh, sheet pages. So the, the models, the base plans, it does not include any annotations, notes, dimensions, none of that. It's just the, the, uh, the base drawing. When we get into our uh, sheet pages, that is where we do our annotation. And that's where this dim scale becomes important. So at the top menu, I'm going to select annotate and show you what we have uh, already pre-positioned within this template. So underneath dimensions, if you drop down the, the menu here, you can see the different dimensions and th they have um, the name with the, the dim scale. Another way to look at this is just click your arrow and, and drop your window down. So we have all these different um, dimension lines which are set up based upon uh, the dim scale. So if we were working on the, this eighth inch plan that I showed you before, we would want to use the uh, TKA 96 dim scale. That again aligns with what we have on the dim scale at the bottom of the grid. So that means all the dimensions here are going to be appropriately sized for an eighth inch drawing. If we were going a little bit smaller size, the, the quarter inch drawing uh, has a dim scale of 48. We would then want to select the TKA 48 dimension and use those dimension lines for the work that is on that quarter inch drawing. And what that does is that when we print a drawing in um, uh, paper space, regardless of what scale it is, all of our dimension lines are going to come in at the same scale and be an eighth inch text that is clearly readable uh, for anyone who is reviewing the drawing. Same thing with our keynotes. If we go up here um, to our, our leaders, Again, the, the drop-down menu shows the, the different ones you have to choose from. Or you can just drop the window down. And we have all of our different uh, keynotes that are, again, associated with the proper um, size of the, uh, the drawing. Now, one difference that we have here is uh, uh, underneath there are lower um, scale uh, or greater scale drawings. So like this on TK16, you can see that um, our standard is to have the text that comes in. That's because on our detailed drawings, we use um, we don't use keynotes. We actually use our text to call out certain items. On our uh, drawings, such as uh, floor plans, uh, elevations, uh, sections, we do use keynotes there, with numbered keynotes, but then a reference on the side that says what that number is. And that just gives us more room to, to work with on our drawings. The final thing that is different about this setup too is our layers. And when I draw, pull this up, you can see that we actually have uh, different layers here. And that's because when we, we draw a floor plan, we are associating layers with objects. When we do an elevation, uh, a section, or detail, we associate layers with the line weight. And so if you go back to the, the times when, when we were doing drafting by hand with pen and pencil, there was usually you know, maybe five to seven different pens or pencils that, uh, that you had to pull from uh, based upon how uh, thick of a line or how heavy that line was on the drawing. Well, that uh, convention has transferred over to uh, the CAD and we do the same thing here. So we're gonna take a look at the, the top examples here, the, uh, the A layers. Um, a again stands for architecture. Here we have the detail lines and now we uh, name it by the type of line that we want to, to have. 
a very fine line all the way up to a very thick line. And then these, the associated line weights um, for each, for each uh, layer. And then we have a description here too. So the, the very fine uh, we use for hatching, patterning, and, and other fine lines. So we're not really trying to draw objects here. We're just trying to add a little uh, emphasis or um, uh, do some, some patterning uh, with that. Then we get into the thin and the medium line weights. And these are, these are both for outlining. Um, this is an alphabetic order, which is why I'm skipping back and forth. But the thin line is for minor object outlines. The medium line is for major object outlines. So we're just outlining whatever that object is, whether it's in the, uh, the background. Um, uh, something we see, if we, like if we do a section cut, we see something in the background that's outlined. Those are the layers we use. And then we have the wide and the thick, and these are both section cut lines. So these are your heavy lines uh, that we're outlining uh, something that's being, uh, that we're cutting a section through and we want it to really stand out as bold. We do this by discipline. So if I scroll down, you'll see that uh, we also have I interiors and L landscape in here as well, but essentially it's the same convention of, um, uh, of categorizing it by the, uh, the line weight. One thing I forgot to mention with the baseline so I'll, or base plan, so I'll go ahead and mention it here. There, there are two layers that always show up on every plan uh, that we don't use. And the first one is layer zero. And that is just a default layer. And anytime you open up any CAD file, whether it's brand new file or an existing one, you're always going to have layer zero. The other one is this death points layer. And death points is something that is automatically generated by the plotting or printing process in CAD. It is a non-plot layer. You can see this little uh, symbol underneath the plot. It's grayed out. That means it's non-plot, so it will not show up when you are, are printing anything. And you see, we don't put any information here. This is just by default, and there's no description. We really don't want to use this. Uh, this is, again, it's just a, a, um, a default that pops up. We have layers assigned for everything that we want to use. And so there should never be anything on here. Uh, some people will, will use that. Uh, to define boundaries or, or to, uh, to put information in there that they don't want printed. We have other layers for that. Uh, for example, down here, the G anno non-plot. Again, this is a non-plot layer. So um, we can use that to put things such as these grids, uh, sheet grids um, to help us with layout, but we don't want to see them on the final. And we also have this in our uh, set of details too. So here's an a detail non-plot. This will not plot, but it can be used to help define boundaries or alignment lines or something along those. We're going to switch gears here and start talking about uh, sheet templates. And so I'm going to go back to my uh, my templates um, standards here. Uh, open up templates, and we've already covered uh, these model um, templates. But up here, uh, as I mentioned before, we have two standard uh, sheet sizes that we use, the ANCD and uh, the ARCF. We tend to use the ANCD more, so I'm gonna go ahead and open that one. And when you do, you see uh, all these files in here that are AutoCAD templates. And uh, they're all named ANCD, uh, and then the by National CAD standard, we have the discipline designator, that's this first letter here. And so these all start with A down to here. A is for architectural, and then here it starts the G series, the uh, uh, general sheets, and then our I sheets for interiors, and then finally in here L for, for landscape. And then after the discipline designator uh, comes the, uh, the drawing sheet designator, that's this first digit. So uh, one is for plans, uh, two stands for elevations, three sections, fours and large plans, five details, and so on. And then the last two digits are for your just your um, sheet series uh, sequence. So the first sheet, second sheet, third sheet, and so on. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this uh, A101, uh, which is probably the most common sheet uh, used for floor plans. So when I open this up, the first thing you probably notice is that it opens up in paper space and that there is already a title block 
uh, border sheet that is referenced into this. Uh, down here is the key plan. The key plan is, is usually part of the border sheet because we want it to be consistent on, on all of our sheets. And if that's something that doesn't apply to the sheets, we have it on an isolated layer. So you can just kind of come up here to your laser to your freeze and just freeze it and then it uh, no longer appears. So let's uh, talk about the, how these, these sheets are set up. So uh, as we indicated before, the, the bottom um, left corner here, down here, let me zoom in on this. Um, this is a tip, uh, standard drawing convention. This is our, our uh, point of origin or uh, zero, zero on our grid. And then we uh, move up from there. We try to work within uh, this quadrant or excuse me, this uh, area of space, okay? And so the, the drawings, is you, you see these grids across here. Uh, we have the rows and uh, vertical columns. The rows, it starts off with A on the bottom, and then uh, the, it's uh, letters that which move forward up to D. And so a lot of people think this is backwards because when we read, we read from top to bottom, but as a standard drawing convention, uh, we work upwards so the we start with A in the bottom and, and D uh, toward the top. Uh, along the top, the, the columns are numbered in sequential order, and these uh, just go from one to five uh, across the top. And the reason why we do that is because it helps us identify a, a certain area or location on the page. So if someone says uh, the area of the drawing that is in uh, C3, well, we go up to row uh, C, which is this uh, second one from the, the top, and over to three, and we know that they are referring to something that is within that area of the drawing. The uh, column five, or, or the column on the farthest left, is always reserved for uh, keynotes, uh, legends, uh, key plans, and, and other information. So this is not part of the drawing area. This is part of the, uh, the annotation and note area. And we, we have the, the keynotes uh, are actually active there on the paper space, as well as the uh, drawing information. We have the north arrow, the scale, and the, uh, the drawing title. But these elevation tags you can see are not active. If I try to click on them, they, they do not uh, the highlight. It's because we do most of our annotation uh, on um, model space, not paper space. We just put our, uh, our, our notes over here on the side. So we're going to switch over to um, the model space. And what is different now is you can see that these actually come in with some drawing grids that are, are set up on here. Uh, there's two of them uh, for quarter inch and eighth inch. And those are the, the two scales that we like to work with on floor plans. And so these are the ones that we, we make a, a available as uh, optional uh, for, um, for floor plans. And then we have the designated dim scales here, of course, 48 and, and 96. And we do all, all of our annotation here so you can see that uh, these elevation tags, this is where they exist, is in the, the model space. And you can uh, edit these from, from in here and type in the appropriate information uh, for the, that drawing. As well as for our dimensions. Um, so when you drop this down, you can see that we only have two here. And they are the two that are appropriate for those scales. The TK48 for the quarter inch scale and TK96. Uh, for the eighth inch scale. Likewise, we do the same for the keynotes and we just make that these two available uh, to really help enforce uh, our standards. So this is where we do our, our drawing and our annotation here. And then uh, when you go to paper space, well, we, we already have a viewport set up for this area and you can't see it, it's on a non-plot layer, um, but this is the area that, that it will, your drawing and annotations will show up on. Now, one thing we want to talk about is in, in the space is down here at the bottom, you, you've seen me flip back and forth here between model and um, uh, paper space. And the paper space we name by the, the sheet. So this is A101. Now, it is possible to add additional tabs in here, but as a, a practice, we do not do that uh, while we're doing design. We have one tab per file, uh, drawing file. Uh, the reason we do that is because when we get in past design and into construction and there's a modification that needs to be made to that sheet for a, uh, an ASI or change order, uh, then we, we make that change and we, we highlight it, we cloud it, and we create a separate tab uh, to indicate which one that is. So if we 
um, are doing an ASI 1, we create a new tab uh, that indicates that supplemental sheet uh, to, to sheet A101, and we keep track of things that way during construction. So again, just to, to reemphasize, during design, we do not create any more tabs than the, the original base uh, drawing, and then we reserve the, uh, that for the supplemental or additional sheets that we use during construction. So this is what we would call an, an additive drawing template, is that when we open it up, it's pretty much a blank slate. There's nothing in here for drawing information, and that has to be uh, added as we go along. And I'm just going to close this one, uh, close these couple files that I have open here, and show you from our templates that all these uh, drawing templates will either be additive or subtractive or deductive. And so I'm going to go ahead and open up another one here, A541. Uh, this will be a deductive one. So you'll see when I when this opens up here um, that all this information is already here. This sheet is completely full with details. Okay, and so the the template is launches like this. These are all standard details. And what we do here is if um, Let's say this access ladder does not apply. We can just come in here, highlight that, highlight that detail and delete it. It's always easier to delete than it is to add. So when we have a, a sheet with a lot of details on it, we tend to populate it with our standard details and then uh, uh, deduct or, or delete uh, what does not apply to that project. I'm going to go ahead and close that one, and we're going to look at a couple others here. Actually, let's go back to our, uh, our templates, and uh, I'm going to show you another one that is additive. We're going to come down here to I-501 and open that one up. So the 5 series is your details. In this, in this case, it's our casework details. And when you open it up, you see that uh, we have the, the drawing um, titles there, but we don't have any information on it. And this is where um, we can start to use our standard details. So if we switch here, you can see the grid that is set up that aligns with uh, the drawing sheet. Okay, but we don't have any information. So I'm going to go back to uh, my AutoCAD um, folder and go to my details. And we have about 350 standard details. Um, underneath here, equipment and furnishings. And here is all my um, standards details for casework. So there's, uh, so I can pick which what I want here. Let's start with this one. We can just open this one up. And our standard details open up as a paper space, but we really want the information that's in the model. So we switch over to here. Now, what's important to note about these standard details is that they are all drawn, again, in the, this uh, correct quadrant with the, the base coordinate or point of origin being at zero, zero. And why this is important, because I can now highlight this whole thing. And if I right click, I'm going to copy with base point, And I, I like to type in these numbers. The base point is zero, zero. Okay, so now that's copied it with that base point. I can go ahead and close this and go back to my additive detail sheet. And now when I right click and hit paste, you can see that it's it's got that point of origin zero zero, but now I can click it on any one of these grid locations and place it in the correct position that I want on that drawing. So I placed it right there and when I switch back to paper space. Now you can see it is within that uh, correct location. In this case, it's D2 and it's brought in at the right scale with the, the drawing title right underneath it. And I can do one more just to show that again. Let's go to um, 34 inch accessible top. And all of our standard details are set up the same way that they are all drawn with um, uh, the point of origin being in the correct location. So you can simply copy and paste and, and drop it into the sheet and it will automatically come in at the right scale and right location. And you can put it at any one of these drawing locations as you wish. And that is how we can quickly populate a sheet using our standard details. 
The other thing that we have available are, are blocks, and these are just symbols. And we have um, about 600 different blocks or symbols that are set up in, the, in these folders. And so to show this, I'm going to go back to uh, a template, sheet template, and I'm just going to start with this uh, A311, which would be um, a standard sheet for wall sections. So this is going to open up. This is an additive sheet. And so I'm going to switch to model and I like to use the three quarter inch. And so with um, uh, blocks, you can do the cut and paste technique that uh, was shown during uh, uh, standard details. But what I like to do uh, more so is come up here to the uh, insert tab at the top, click insert and select blocks from libraries. And then this it brings this up and you, you can come over here to your libraries. And this is directed uh, to our um, library of different blocks that we have. And so I'm going to come up here <coughs> and select uh, masonry. I'm going to start with that one and um, uh, block, a CMU block. So we'll select that. That shows up in here and I can just right click and insert. And that comes in. That is my block now. And it comes in on a zero layer. Most blocks start off as zero, uh, zero layer. So you have to use some layer discipline and come in here and assign it to the uh, the correct layer that you want. And what's nice about a block is that you can select it and uh, easily copy it up several different times. And it's all one single element. So I can quickly stack some CME blocks on top of each other there. And now um, this may be a a load bearing wall so I'm going to come back to my blocks um, and find a, um, a bar joist and I'm going to insert the bar joist. Now what I've done with these blocks you can see here the point of origin is right where the bearing condition is and so I can just simply place it right on top of that wall. It's a little bit different that, in the, that we're not placing it in the, um, the the uh, upper right quadrant like we did details. This is more of where the point of bearing or point of origin is. So again, use some um, layer discipline, put it on the correct layer. And now I'm gonna go back to my masonry and select a, say it's a brick clad. And all these symbols are already drawn at scale. Um, so we know that these are gonna we don't have to change anything. They're drawn in the correct size of the material and correct scale. And this is going to be a cavity wall, so I'm going to put two inches. There we go. Insert again. So these are bricks that I know now are coming in with the correct spacing. So we have three bricks on top of each other that matches up to the CMU. And get this on the correct layer. And so I'm very quickly able to start putting pieces and components together because these blocks are already there and available and it can just simply be dropped in. So go ahead and close this now. Close that, uh, close that file. So you can see that through the system of templates that we have available with the, the drawing sheets, uh, the, uh, the details and the blocks, uh, we can really increase efficiency, put together drawings very quickly, and more importantly, increase quality that we enforce standards uh, across the, uh, the board with everyone working off the same uh, standard information that we have uh, produced uh, through AutoCAD. This concludes this TK Academy course on AutoCAD. If you enjoyed this course, please give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more courses and other content from TK Architecture.